Hello and welcome back to Infinite Remote Control. I'm John and in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to secure your motor shaft for an outrunner once and for all. So if you're like me, you may have an issue with your motor where the grub screw is too small and there's no flat edge on the motor shaft so the motor slips at a high RPMs. Now I was at a loss at what to do until I came across a man named Brian Shears. He commented on my unboxing video of these motors and uh, he basically helped me figure out what I need to do and he told me his experiences and how he ended up fixing this motor. So he recommended that I go out and I buy a kit like this. This is a tap and die kit and uh, he said that I need to get the metric one so I can put in a three millimeter uh, grub screw or set screw, whatever you call it, which is what that is right there. So what we're basically gonna be doing is removing the set screw that holds the shaft in place and drilling out the hole to be larger and then tapping or creating new threads within that hole to screw in a larger grub screw. So that grub screw is just from an RC pinion, or RC car pinion gear, but you can pick them up at your local hobby shop. And then you can get these uh, as a kit at like a hardware store, like Home Depot or Lowe's if you're in the US. Uh, or you can buy them online at, from anywhere from home improvement online stores all the way to hobby stores. I saw that um, Tower Hobbies even has one of these sets on their online store. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a three millimeter tap, which is what this is. You're going to need a tool to hold that uh, bit. And then you're also going to need a three millimeter, or actually no, sorry, a 0.25 millimeter uh, drill bit to drill out the hole for the, um, for the tapping bit. But if you buy a kit, you're going to get not only the bit, but also um, the tap. So let's get started on this project. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do is remove the original small grub screw. Here's a quick size comparison between the old one and the new one that we will be installing. Now at this point, the grub screw will be removed so the shaft should be free, but if it's not, what you're gonna need to do is remove the clip or pin that holds down the shaft on the bottom of the motor. For this step, I typically like to take a large plastic bag, put the entire motor into it, and then pry off the clip. That way, when the clip comes off, it will not go flying across the room, but will stay contained within the plastic bag. Next, we will need to remove the washer. Now with the shaft completely free from the second part of the motor, we can pull up and lift this top part away. Next, all we're going to need to do is just remove the shaft. Now, if you had to go through all of these steps, chances are your shaft's going to be very tight. So, I would recommend taking a old rag or cloth, even a paper towel might work, and a locking wrench, such as the one here, and wrap this side of the shaft with the cloth and then lock down onto the shaft and then pull out. So you're gonna to wanna to use one of these for that. Now that we have the shaft completely removed, I would recommend going ahead and taking this part of the motor, putting your shaft in, kind of mocking it up to where you would think it would sit, which would be right about there. And then going ahead and taking this part of the motor, lining it up at where it sits and making a mark on the shaft with a sharpie or a permanent marker of where the grub screw will sit on the shaft and you'll see why we need that mark in a few moments. So now with either a Dremel which would be the preferred tool or even a file like this one here we will go ahead and take the sharpie mark and create a flat edge on the shaft from about up above the sharpie mark down below the sharpie mark for about just under a centimeter I would say um, for the grub screw to rest on so it would be impossible for the shaft to slip. Also make sure to wear eye protection when doing it with the Dremel. I would also recommend taking a locking wrench and clamping down on the shaft to 
to hold it in place and so that you don't burn your hands. Here is the finished product and this is what it should look like when you are done. Now take the provided drill bit that you are supposed to use to tap a 3mm hole and drill as straight as you can and as quickly as you can in and through the hole where the original grub screw was. I like to put it onto a piece of cloth like this, line it up as level as I can, and drill. It's as easy as that. What I like to do is just go back through and just slide it in and make sure that it goes in. Seeing that it does, I'll pull it out. And now we're ready to create the threads. Now here's the part that most people typically dread or feel like they can't do. So go ahead and load the threading device into the tool that they provide and go ahead and insert it into the new hole that you just drilled out to be larger and press and apply a lot of force but don't try to go in as straight as you can go in and let the tapping device kind of find its way just make sure that you are one applying a lot of force and two just being very careful not to allow any problems with the thread. Once it's starting to appear on the other side, you can start to lessen the force and just let the threads do their thing. Once you have made it all the way through, slowly remove it and there if you can see are your new threads make sure to clean out any small debris or metal particles that may have been attracted to the magnets after the entire process is complete now go ahead and start inserting the larger 3 millimeter grub screw with a 1.5 millimeter hex wrench. Now go ahead and take the C-clip and washer and reinstall those onto the shaft. With the C-clip in the washer on the shaft, we can go ahead and slide that up and through the bearings and then lining up the flattened edge of the shaft with the grub screw as you can see we will go ahead and insert that now with the shaft fully installed you can tighten down the larger grub screw apply a significant amount of force and it will not strip and you are complete. Now you have a good motor that does not have a slipping shaft. That concludes this video. I hope that you liked it and found it informative and possibly even had this video help you solve a problem that you've been having for quite some time. So with that, I'll talk to you later.